Well, hi everybody and welcome to another edition of our midweek match chat. Here we are again in our little Maver studio, which is really, really nice and warm because we've had the heaters on and everything. So while the weather ain't too kind out there for all us anglers, we can at least bring you a few little bit of fishing tip, bit of fishing gossip, show you a little bit of new product and literally just talk everything fishing, which you enjoy, I enjoy, and you know, all those anglers out there will like a little bit of fishing talk. And I have another guest in our little bit of a studio today, none other than good friend and maybe sponsored angler, Callum Dix. Thank you very much for having yeah. me. What do, you, what do you think to our little bit of a... Yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's nice, nice and warm yeah, now, isn't it? It's on, lovely, yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's great isn't it? So, Callum, welcome, welcome to this. You've been on Match Chats many a times before when... The eye to someone and we sat in his t-shirts and yeah, catching loads summer of fish. Season. Yeah, summer seems just a long distant mm -hmm. memory at the minute for most of us, I'm afraid. But uh, the easy days of summer will soon be back ways when we can be out catching loads of fish. So on that note, I'm going to ask you, were you doing your fishing at minute, Callum? What you're up to and, and, and things like that, just to keep all our viewers entertained? And so yeah, it's, been, it's been quite busy last uh, few months, so... I went to White Acres. I normally do two, but I only done one week this year. I've done the Preston Festival. Yeah, that was good. Fishing, unbelievable. It's brilliant. It's not like your your regular commercial. Not not regular commercial, but um, it's not two three hundred pounds. Um, I what, like that though. Yeah, I, like I, that I love it. I, I like that. I really I, like I, it. Um, White Acres now is like <clears throat> sixty to one hundred and twenty. Apart from Belinji. Um, and it's a lot of big F ones, so the fishing's brilliant. It's maggots, it's meat, it's ground bait. So you're so, using your head a bit more rather exactly. than your like pallets. Yeah, and, 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 and we're that. feeding some bait yeah, because you can perfect. feed maggots rather than pellets. You, you're feeding a, like a volume of bait, which I really enjoy, and it suits the angers that put bait in. Positive. So yeah, so that Positive. was that was a good, um, really enjoy. Probably the most enjoyable weeks fishing I've had at White Acres that was um, for actually catching fish in the way I caught them. It was brilliant. It's just really, like, really um, enjoyable fishing. A lot of maggot fishing. Um, cool. Yeah, so the five days, I had three section wins, a second and a third, so it was four from the festival, which is nice. Won a few uh, a few pennies. Oh, a few, um, yeah, few, few bucks in the pocket there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was good. A really enjoyable week. Come back, I'd done um, a little session of probably five matches in a row at Ivy House Lakes, just fishing for Ivy, I've never been, I've never been. I've heard a lot about it. You've told yeah, me a lot about brilliant. it. Nice fishing. Absolutely brilliant little worm. Silvers and carp there, yeah, isn't it? a lot yeah. of silvers and yeah. carp. Um, but I had a fish safe uh, qualifier there, silverfish qualifier there. So I'd done like four practice matches. Uh, I was only planning on doing like one or two, but I'd ended up doing like four or five because the fishing was enjoyed so good. It. He enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah that's all brilliant. about what fishing it was Absolutely about. brilliant. So I'd done like four practice matches, um, caught a load of fish on worms, grain bait, stuff like that, skimmers, roach. It's like... It, it, Similar to White Acres, it's not like a com it's not like a general commercial. The fishing there, even though you're fishing on a commercial lake, um, it was more like you felt like it was natural lakes. Yeah, the way that, the fishes that responded. Nice little, 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 yeah, yeah, like you were start 50, 50 fish, mix Yeah, you start fishing, and then like on natural lakes, the fish just tend to feed later. Exactly the same with Ivy Ice. The fish yeah. just if your peg gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and in general, the last hour is brilliant. Um, so that's why I think why I enjoyed it so much. And then I had a good day on the qualifier, um, caught 20 odd pound of roach and skimmers on the qualifier. So that was brilliant. So I enjoyed that as well. Yeah. Funny you mentioned that. Just just before we went any further in this chat, you mentioned like that like um, you think pegs get stronger as they go along winter time and and things like that. Um, I do a lot. You, you know, I do a lot of the, the feeder qualifiers and things like that. And and like it's the complete opposite in them. In the fact that you tend to catch a lot of fish early, and then mm. I don't know later on in the match. Airfield's a prime example. We have the Carpa League at Airfield at minute, which uh, I told you about on a previous episode. As the match tends to draw on, the fishing gets worse. Mm. It happens. It happens quickly, mm. and we all we all think that last hour at match, summertime last hour at match, we go down as edges, don't we? Mm. But. And I don't know whether it's something to do with the, the depths of the water or things like that, but the last hour always seems to be the worst. When the light levels are fading, catching like decent carp in winter just 
don't seem to happen. No, I don't know. I think that's the light levels. Maybe, sure. yeah, and the temperature. Temperature, I don't yeah. know. There's always think, that winter. The thing is what you've got to remember about fish in the winter. They only need to feed for a short and short spell. The window of opportunity, yeah. we call it. So they it, don't yeah, need to feed all day. Yeah. So like, if the silverfish want to feed later in the day, um, they will do. And if the carp want to feed earlier in the day, then they will do. Yeah. You know, it's um, they're stubborn, aren't they? they? Don't need to eat a lot in no. the winter. I say, I say it a lot, and I tell a lot of people this, uh, especially like you know, catching big carp on places with feeders or poles. Sometimes through the day, there'll be that window of opportunity of opens yeah, when, yeah, of course. Bosh, they have, yeah. a, they have a yeah, go. They have a feed, and I yeah. think that's carp, I think it's silverfish, yeah. whatever I think whatever fishing we're yeah. all doing, you've got to be ready for that mm. for that window of it. It's a great way of putting it. I, I say it a lot and I say it to a lot of people, sooner or later the window will open for you and that opportunity comes along. But it's about being focused at that, that point. Yeah, definitely. I think water temperature makes a big difference yeah, as well. What, 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 I yeah. think water temp, light levels and things like that, it's pretty... We'll never, never know, will we? No, we'll never, never no. know. But I think sooner or later. But I've seen it so many times at, at quite a few of these venues that the fish, especially big carp, tend not to feed late. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing, isn't I it? I spoke to a few people about it and yeah. it's like, oh, I don't know why that is. But I think the common sense of opinion, and, you know, speaking to anglers that do it regularly, you know, like Steve Ringer and play, they think it's the light levels. Light the levels, light levels yeah. go to a stage. Yeah. But... If you ask the carp angler, yeah, he'd yeah. probably want to catch him at night. Yeah. So that it really dispels that myth. And depends on the venue as well. Um, yeah. Depths. Yeah. Uh, certain things make a big difference, don't they? You know. If we um, knew, we'd yeah, win every match. We'd win everything. We would. Yeah. We would. We. Yeah. we'd Especially where you draw. Jesus Ooh, chance Christ. would be a fine thing. I'll no, just turn them into good ones, that's all about it. <laughs> turn them into good ones, turn them into good ones. So, uh, where's your winter fishing base now then, Callum? Um, where, where are we off to now? We've, Festivals so, are still quite big. Yeah, I just I fished a two-day at Monk Hall Fishery. That was really good, learnt a lot. Um, and then, basically, the Tunnel Barn Winter League is started now. Steve fishes that. Steve he was did. telling us that last yeah. week he's fishing uh, the Tunnel Barn. So that's ten matches through the winter. So it's like three matches in November, three December, three January and one in February. Is that the festival we've got to be like half man, half F1 to complete? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what half of them walk around like, yeah. looking like F1. Yeah, yeah, they just do that. That, that is yeah. the most highest quality league in the yeah, country when it, it comes brilliant. to F1 fishing. Yeah, everyone's very good and they do it a lot. So it's difficult to compete. Um, but yeah, so that's that's like the the big bulkhead of my fishing in the winter is fishing at Tunnel Barn. Um, I, I would say I was going to fish Todborough on Sundays, um, but that's just been cancelled that league, so I don't think I'll be going, which is really disappointing. Shame, yeah, yeah, it's a, a shame. So, so yeah, a lot of matches, a lot of uh, Tunnel Barn, and I'm going to try and do as much silverfish fishing as I can. Yeah. So I really enjoy it, like going to Ivy House, going to Viaduct. <clears throat> silverfish fishing through the winter is brilliant. I love it. Yeah. It's really a lot of people good. do that now, don't you know? Yeah, you the know. problem is the carp, they like what you said. They yeah. only feed for certain short times and they all ball up. Um so we silverfish. Need the to sit yeah, it's not really my it's not really not your thing. Not your thing. Busy. Um so yeah, silverfish fishing and tunnel for me through the winter. Um I am going to White Acres again next week, though. I've got the final festival of the year, which is the Garbellino Festival. That'd be a silverfish festival, wouldn't it? Silverfish yeah. festival. What if F1s, F1s do count? count. Uh, so you F1s. can't really call it a proper silverfish festival, um, but it's still, it's the last festival of the year. It's an enjoyable nice one. Float only. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. which is, uh, for me, it's, it's nice. I'll enjoy that. Um, so, yeah. So that'd be me then. Yeah, for the rest of the year and for the start of next year. Then we're back into match this qualifiers match starting this again. Qualifiers, that's, that's always yeah. on your campaign. Last it, year I didn't get the chance to do too much because I had a baby. Um, did you? Did you have a baby? Yeah. Hey, yeah. That's 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 the limit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah he was looking. Right. I'm going to tell you, he was looking absolutely dog tired <laughs> this morning. When he pulled in here, he looked like death warmed up. And I went, "Are you all right, mate?" And he, he was like, oh, "I've been away all night with the baby." And the, thing, but yeah, the joys of fatherhood. You, yeah. you won't, you won't have it any no, other way. I wouldn't, no, I no, no, he wouldn't have it anyway. Right at three o'clock this morning, I would have. Three o'clock, you, <laughs> three o'clock, you wanted to chuck her out the window. The joys of fatherhood and the joys of going up, but you um, wouldn't have it any other way. But yeah, no. he will, he will dog rough. I'll tell you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, next year I'm going to real put a big effort into match this. Um, try and get in that final again. Um, and then, yeah, the final looked brilliant last year. So Yeah, fantastic final. Really <laughs> going to really put some effort into yeah. that. Going to have to travel some miles, unfortunately, for where I live. But, um, but yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really go out, go out of this year and try and get in that final. 
Yeah. Well, don't forget, guys, tickets are on sale now for Match This. Just go onto the Maver UK webpage. You can get your tickets. All the 25 qualifiers are all on there. Tickets are all on sale now, and they, they tickle away. And it's coming up to that time of year. It's coming up to Christmas. Don't want to buy your loved one for Christmas. You know, if you don't want to buy him fishing tackle because they don't like you to, treat him to a match this ticket. It's dead easy. Slip it into his Christmas card and uh, I think you'll love one out there and love you forever if he buys a chance of winning uh, 50 grand. So with winter leagues well underway and things like that, I get asked loads and loads of times and I'm sure you do, Callum. And you can see we've got, got a few little bits on the table here and I'm, I want to talk about elastics because, you know, a lot of people doing silverfish fishing, F1 fishing, even carp fishing in winter, you know, they want to know about elastics, they want to know what elastic to use, and, uh, you know, ourselves at Maven, every other company out there, we've got literally loads and loads of different types of elastic. You've got the hybrid, you've got the, the dual cores, the tri cores, uh, and various other ones on the market from other companies, hydros and, and, and things like that. And you'll get this question, Callum, I'm sure you will, what elastic do you use? And I get the same one, what elastic do you, you know do you use? And you do equally a lot, lot more pole fishing than, than me. So I thought it'd be a really, really good uh, thing. While we've got Callum here with the various types of fishing deals, like he's told you, the silver fish fishing and, and, and things like that, you know, what's your go-to elastics? What you'd use? We'll say, we're going to say winter. We, we can bring summer into it, obviously, but we'll say winter. You, you know, you go to elastics, why you like to use them and different things, because hybrid elastic has become really, really, really popular out there, I think. You, you, I'm, yeah, you know, yeah. in the shop, I bet you sold yeah. equally as much hybrid elastic to yeah, all of than that now. So, you know, hybrid's come popular, but, you know, there's definitely, definitely, you can incorporate all this elastic for different uses into your, into your fishing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going to throw it over to you a little bit now, Callum. Like, here we go. <laughs> yeah, just chuck, chuck it in, chuck it into him. Uh, I'm a big hollow fan. I will say I am a big hollow elastic fan. Um, I'm not going to answer for Callum. He can, an he can answer himself on that. But yeah, let's just have a little, little talk about elastic. So we know you're fishing tunnel and places like that uh, at the minute. So yeah, we'll lead it in with that and then we'll we'll... We'll see how we we'll see how we go on this one. It might might be a bit of longer discussion than we want it to be. So basically, if I was going to pick one elastic to use the rest of my life, I'd pick dual core right. because it's the more the most all round elastic out of the range for everything. For everything, yeah. Um, the X core and the tri core do have their uses, uh, but they're a little bit more specific on what they do well. Specialised. Specialised in what they do well. The dual core for me is the, the best all round elastic through the range. So the winter now, winter time, uh, the two sizes of dual core that I use, I use the three to five, the white one Ooh, for yeah. silverfish fishing. The really fine one. Yeah, yeah the real fine that, one. The white one, that's white if anybody wants uh, to. So okay. there's two ways of fishing with the white one as well. You can either put it through the whole of your top kit and it becomes very soft. The other option you can do is you can just put about a meet, 1.2 meters through a top kit, just tie the rest of it on a bit of braid and have a shorter length of it in your top kit. There you go. That works. Proper top tip. Unbelievable. That proper, proper top tip. Guys. It's a little bit faffy putting it in your top kit, um, but if you just measure 1.2 meters of the white elastic, tie the braid onto it, and just imagine this elastic going through your pole. It is unbelievable how it works. I used it at Ivy Ice, 1.2 meters of the 3.5 dual core, and it's brilliant. It just works unbelievable with a shorter amount of elastic so in your pole. Basically, pot. you're increasing the strength of it slightly, yes, slightly. by having less elastic. Exactly. In. But yeah. just for some reason, when you've got less elastic in a long top kit, it just works unbelievably well. And you have the dac you have the dacron coming not the dacron, uh, the, the braid. braid coming through your puller yep. coming through your puller yeah looks like normal so yep. yeah. so if you need to pull it out if you hook a carp or something just pull it out just just like fishing with elastic but you're pulling braid out through your pole yeah that's a proper top tip i bet nobody's really a, work, really work in fact that. i like that I, li I like the idea of that and we you're gonna have to do a video on that mm, we're yeah, gonna have to do a video on that uh, for all you guys out there because a little bit difficult to understand but you know i think the the science behind it is less elastic, less stretch, a little bit more powerful, but still 
quite soft. But what I tend to do with my elastics in general when I'm using a softer elastic is to use a slightly softer elastic than what you need, then ping it up a touch. Because when you're fishing for silverfish, the last thing you want is to be catching one every chuck like the last hour and have an elastic hanging out at the end of your pole. Yeah. So if you have a slightly pingier elastic, you know the elastic's always going to go back in your top kit. Yeah. Pingy, and, pingy, yeah. just well, just something that means it's a little bit tighter in your pole. You know, you've pulled a bit out, you've tightened it off. Just for anybody who well, don't quite get what he means by pingy, they like, yeah. yeah, just just making it just that little bit tighter. Tight, you know, yeah. don't. I think that's the thing with other elastics as well. Uh, can, you can actually make them tighter than what your hybrids or your solid elastics are. You can make them tighter in your pole yeah. because they are softer anyway. Because they're more forgiving. A lot, lot, yeah, yeah. a lot, mm. lot more forgiving when playing fish. And then the two elastics I use at Tunnel Barn, um, I always use short kits at Tunnel Barn. That's so the that's, short F1 kits. Yeah, the yeah. short F1 kits. So that's incorporating the less elastic in your pole, yeah, exactly, exactly what I've just talked about. But I use the four to seven, I think personally now the water temperature is at about 8.5 at the moment so I'll just be using that now yeah. because the fish once it goes below 10 degrees don't tend to fight as hard yeah. but if you are looking like I've just done that video and the fish were still feeding and fighting and the water temperature was 11 degrees I'd use the 8 to 11 which everyone knows I use for pretty much absolutely everything um, so yeah so if I was going to pick an elastic to use for the rest of my life I'd pick dual core um, the Tricor I'm a big fan of, I know you I are as well. Yeah, it's my favourite, that, that's my favourite, <coughs> that one. Yeah. With the name, obviously it's Tricor, so there's three layers, so it does last <coughs> a long time, which is brilliant. You don't have to change it as often. The one downside to having a triple layer elastic is it makes the pole quite heavy. Yeah. It does make the pole quite heavy, which is absolutely fine for when you're fishing short and in the margins because yeah. you're not getting much pole out. But for me, I wouldn't be using a triple layered elastic when I'm fishing shallow at 16 metres nope. because the pole Matters. reacts different. Um, so, yeah, but the Tricor, if you want a real durable elastic, it's just going to last you ages. It's going to be real strong, never going to let you down. I'd always, I would try and use the Tricor. Yeah, four we, sizes. In that. I, yeah. I, use, I use three of the sizes. Yeah. I use a 12, 14. The 15, 18, the 18, 20, I use it quite a lot for my margin fishing. Yeah, I'd all the margin the fishing. fishing. I use the 18 to oh, 20, that, brilliant, you know, it's really good. It does sound quite brutal, Calm, but you know, 18, 20, you mentioned to people, oh, you don't really want to, but it, again, it's so soft, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, it's forgiving. And forgiving, and once you've used it a couple of times, I think that's when you get the best out of this elastic, because it's had all that stretch took out of it, that, that initial like harshness. Yeah, yeah. Um, it starts to it starts to behave really, really yep. nice, doesn't it? Definitely, but yeah, yeah it's got its purpose, um, and it really does well work well for that. Um, X core to start off with. I think one of the reasons why it's so popular is obviously its price is a lot cheaper. It's the price, isn't it? It's uh, a lot you know, cheaper. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're working in the shop at yeah. Bristol Angling Centre. I'm out in the shops visiting the shops and. You know, you you see it with customers coming in. That you know, it's four ninety nine. Yeah. Um, you know, as opposed to elevens, twelve ninety nines for your for your all the elastic. So you can change it twice as much. Yeah. But, this economic climate, people yeah. are definitely looking at that. But the durability of it is yep. not. It's not the same. It's not the same as no. a holiday. Not you know. I think this one is very very good compared yeah. to others. Yeah. Um, it's quite. Know. I just find it quite harsh, X core. But in certain circumstances, that's brilliant. Well, if you're going to be a bear, be a good one. That's, <laughs> that's, that, that's when you need um, this one, isn't it? So at Todber, when we're fishing for big weights, I use the X core 18 to 20 through a short kit and set it tight, pingy. Um, that's frightening, that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You're catching a thousand pounds, yeah, fish potentially. Yeah, trying to catch a thousand pounds. Um, but pound. yeah, but it is brilliant elastic and it is only 499. Yeah. So you can't really go wrong. But if your budget do, does allow you to just stretch to the jaw cord, I t personally would. I know it's easy for me to say, but I would I would try and use jaw cord when yeah. I can. But they've all got their own purposes, and it is a great range of elastic. Yeah. You know, starting, starting you know, the X-cord elastic, starting at a 4.6, a lot of silverfish uh, guys use it. Yeah. Uh, particularly around my area, we've got a big silverfish uh, following in our area now. Uh, the teams of four starting yeah. at all craft yeah, with yeah, all the yeah. canals and things like that and you know the especially you know the four to six the six to eight suddenly this last you know few weeks it started mm. to to fly off the shelf yeah, and, and yeah. people are looking at, at buying 
you know, the smaller summertime, it was the 14, 16, 16, 18, uh, which were the most popular. But you can see the smaller sizes uh, are now coming into it. And uh, yeah, a, a great elastic. It is an hybrid because it's the hybrid elastic is sold as a cross between a standard a standard elastic as we used to call yeah. it you know yeah. like the original slips yeah. elastics yeah. of this world and and latex and, and we've tried to get the characteristics of a, a standard solid elastic and a dual core and yeah hence the hybrid elastics were born so uh, yeah there we go on elastic guys so i hope that's helped help you out a little bit really do um check them out all these will be available at your local Maver dealer the X cores, 499s, your dual cores, your tri cores are 11, 12, 12 99. They've each got a purpose. If you're unsure and you're still unsure, even after our conversation, drop a little comment in the questions below. Send a question in to myself or send it, well, send it to Callum or address it to Callum, address it to myself, and we'll, in another show, we'll get the answer and try and answer it as best we can. So, yeah, just drop one in the questions below and, and we'll. Uh, answer anything about elastics one great little tip sorry just to finish it off um, if you get a five meter spool of dual core it will do three f1 kits all right there we go so Good that tip. is um so once you actually think about that it's not too expensive to not stretch to the dual core three top kits in one spool yeah that's something we didn't say this is this comes in three meter lengths the dual core and tri core is available in two and a half and five meter length so you know you've got you've got best of both worlds in that and five meters yeah P proper proper bargain and while we're on the subject of questions just like i said if you'd any questions on the elastic check them out in the links below we've got a few questions we've got a few questions from our first uh, other broadcast what we did um so i'm going to go straight into them i'm going to ask we can both answer these Callum. we can both answer these because there's a good cross selection of questions here, uh, which we can easily compare to both our fishing. There's a nice feeder one, there's a couple of pole ones, and there's one about hook baits, which yeah, we'll uh, we'll decide on. But I uh, the first question I've got here, and it's from a really really good friend who watches Match Chat quite regular. Um, it's Jeff Law. Uh, he's from East Lothian Angling Club. Uh, he retired the other week. Uh, from running matches, he used to run all the matches in Scotland. Um, mm -hmm. Always, always watch match chat. And as a nice little uh, birthday surprise, some friends uh, who has a tackle shop um, uh, in Scotland uh, sent me a message and said, "You know, it's his birthday. Would you give him a ring?" So we give him a ring. I surprised surprised him one night and rung up and said, uh, "You're talking to uh, Andy," and it like proper proper shocked him so uh, he did actually send a question he sent me a lovely app lovely app what says he slowly and zang so on on one of the match chats i'm going to wear it for you jeff so this question's for you and here we go he says how do you approach your fishing matches pole matches in particular change from summer to winter so you know we're into the we're into the realms of winter now how would your approach change through summer and winter. Bear in mind, they live in Scotland, so I think it's like winter all the time yeah, up there, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah, it's cold. So, you know, I would, yeah, I'm gonna throw that one on you, Callum, because that's a really, really good one uh, to throw in. It's a great question from uh, from Jeff. Um, so basically, the biggest thing that, that changes through the year, through temperature, is the volume of bait that you feed. Yeah. So we all know in the summer, you can go to these venues and you can feed eight, 10, 12 pints of maggots, casters, you can put in big potfuls of grain bait Ground in the margins. Boss, like, yeah, you can fire like. 10 pints of pellets in on a lead straight uh, a waggler. But in the winter, if you were to go and do that, you all you're gonna be doing is pushing the fish away from you. Yeah, it's the, just the, asking for trouble, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, the best way of catching carp when the water gets below six, seven degrees is a single hook bait. Yeah. You go to all these big commercial fins and, and even at Tunnel Bar on the weekend, um, the first hour of the match, all I did was just dog bread around my peg. Single hook bait, not feeding a thing. So that's the biggest thing, is as it gets colder, you can literally, you can do it to the book. The water temperature, it just gets less and less bait as you less go down. Bait. Less bait as the temperatures get colder and colder and colder. And then, you still use pellets? Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it's yeah, still yeah, warm, yeah. but yeah, yeah it's oh, it's not as good as it is in the summer. I think what happens in the winter, the fish can't digest bait as well. So if you were to put a hard pellet, the fish can't break it down. Break it down if you give them a, a piece of like sloppy bread or um, some maggots, just one. It's just and it just digests. It's, yeah. it's, it's a lot easier for them to uh, to eat. So yeah, volume of bait and bait that you feed does make a big difference. And the other thing that's massive is depth. Obviously, in the summer, you're going to be looking to catch fish in 10, 12 inches of water down the edge, across to islands, mud lines. Every in the winter, you just got to be looking to fish in that deeper water because the water gets clearer. Gets clearer, gets colder. Yeah. Fish, yeah. They're just looking for safety more yeah, than anything. Like, they just uh, a tunnel barn at the moment. If you look to feed maggots across or in the margins, you've just set your float as between three and a three and a half foot, and it's perfect. And when you dog bread, it's between 28 and 32 inches. That's the depth at the very moment. Very technical, that, isn't it? Yeah. Very technical. And we, we, yeah, I know in another episode of this, we're going to talk more in detail about some of the technical side of, uh, of winter leagues and, and, and fishing and F1 fishing. And, and, yeah, and just going on what you said there, Callum, you know, even my fishing, you know, a lot of my feeder fishing and feeder matches, it changes. Airfield in particular now, a couple of weeks ago, we were still catching lots and lots of fish up the islands. We were catching fish tight to the islands, and that them fish now that they've Back just, off. They've just yeah. come away from it. You can catch a few fish up the islands really, really late in your yeah. match, but they're not. Not. They're not there. They to live start there with. that time, this time of year now. They're just no. moving into that deeper water. Yeah. They're moving down the lake a little bit. And, yeah. You know the things that things are starting to change, and the leaves are well, you know, well off the trees now, and frosts are on us, and yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, yeah, just nice. So, though, there we go, Jeff. I hope that answers your question. Uh, don't be chucking gallons of bait in. Not things tackle dealers want to wear because, you know, you, we want you to buy bait. But it's just, I think it's about being sensible, yeah. can't it? Yeah. Sensible and, and bait choice being uh, being a, a premium, really. Pick the right bait and you'll, you'll still catch loads of fish. I'm, I'm sure you will. Right, here we have another question. Not sure, not sure where this, this question's from, but it's from Mike. Um, I think this one's aimed at me here, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw it over to you. Would it be easier to use uh, a snap link swivel at the end of the hook length uh, instead of tying it to the feeder? Well, uh, as you can see, we've got we've got my video on here where, where I actually showed this uh, the other week and and how I attach how I attach my hook lens to the feeder. In fact, it's probably a perfect time that he's just a, just showing it now right on the screen. Um, I actually tie all my hook lengths up at home on four inch hook lengths for my fishing. I'm sure you, you at the same, Cal, you probably don't attach it like me because there's very, very few people out there attach to the bottom of the feeder like I do. But what I will do, I use a swivel stop bead, a swivel stop bead right to the to bottom of the feeder, and then I attach the link swivel to that. But I then tie my hook length, I cut the loop off and tie my hook length to the swivel. I don't tie all my hook lengths at home and put the swivels onto them at home. You can do, you can do, but they're so difficult to then get in an hook length box. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I am 100% convinced it is the best way of getting your bait to react and the way it falls out your feet. It's the perfect example there. Look, you can see I'm, I'm actually holding it in my hand there. Look, there you see, it hangs straight, it hangs down. It makes that bait behave really really natural in the fact that it keeps my bait so close to the ball of pellets as, they, as they're falling off that that method now i don't know if you use it that way Cal, but I, everybody's different but i got shown that way a long time uh, ago by a, a brilliant angler craig o'brien who quite pioneered uh, method feeder fishing and you know it catches me more fish you can just see so it's, it's hanging down the side it's keeping the line out of the way for any of them big wary carp what are coming up and wanting to inspect them pellets and suck that bait in. It's just the line's not in front of its face where it can touch it uh, and move it away. And 
I don't know. Is, is it something you? It's not. It's, I gotta be honest. I don't do loads, lot of lot loads. Of well, a general yeah, small um, method feeder fishing, but for those big carp with uh, using feeders, I don't do loads of it. But it does make. Now you've explained it like that. It, it does make a lot of sense. And you look at these carp anglers, how they, um, how the time they spend on the rigs and how it reacts. So I'm sure it makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, but by doing something like this, you know, you know. Once I've put that in the water, you know, it's genuinely fishing. The, 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 the rig is fishing. I can't twitch it, I can't move it, I can't lift it. I can't. It's got to fish and you need every little bit of advantage you can get in having that bait in and around your feeder like that. And the link swivel does that. It gives it a full, nice 360. And it just helps the, just helps the rig pivot. So, you know, don't tie them up at home if you'll need a million link swivels. <laughs> just just tie it up on the bank and if you know if you're struggling if you're struggling to tie from a four inch just tie them up to six inch you've got a couple of inches a couple of inches more where you can help you tie them and bring them back down to that nice four inch length which i think is is absolutely perfect it's the ultimate up length size to to catch you a few fish so you can always check this video out it's on the uh, navy uk facebook it's on the facebook page it's also on the youtube page as well and uh, it'll give you a proper full rundown, Mike, on that. So, all right, so we're two questions down, two questions down, two more questions to go. This one's definitely, definitely <laughs> aimed at you, Mr. Dix. Definitely aimed at you because I've never put one of these on in my life, but I've sold a few thousand of them. <laughs> Would you be ill? And it's from John, it's from John in Stafford. Uh, so I hope this answers your question, John. Would you be able to fish a jig afloat? in winter or is it mainly a summer based method i would say it's aimed more towards summer um but i would never be afraid to set one up obviously when it goes really cold and it's not really the the sort of thing you would use because the fish would be a bit closer to the bottom but we i've caught loads of the fish in it in like october time when it does start to go cold but you can still use it it's, it's fish brilliant still, still on that last little bit of a munch yeah basically always. whenever you're catching shallow i'd always set one up yeah. i'd always have one set up or on a winder ready to go because if you're fishing a fixed rig a normal rig and you start missing bites there's nothing better to then put on yeah. because then you hit every bite so if if you go into a match and you think there's a good chance i could catch shallow i will always set one up always always there you go hope that answers your question uh, there john so yeah never rule it out in winter definitely not you can rule any method out in no, winter can you no, you definitely. must always have something as part of your armory and yeah if it catches fish yeah and it two minute job it's on it's on your top kit and and, and away you go and my last and final question, and it's from Chris. I think it's a Chris who I know, actually, from Sonny Doncaster. <laughs> Sonny Donny. Donny. Uh, Donny Vegas. Right. What would be, and this is definitely, definitely, definitely aimed at both of us. What would be your first choice winter hook bait? I would have to go with maggots, personally. Oh, nice. Yeah. Would that be for everything? For yeah. carp, F1s, everything. everything? Yeah, that's yeah. the number one choice. Yeah. Maggots are brilliant. They catch yeah. everything, don't they? Yeah, they work. I mean, it's not just for the winds as well. They work all year round. They've stood so. the test of time. Like, yeah. We've used maggots. maggots since, like, you know... It's just the movement, the, the texture, everything about them. The fish just love eating maggots. They just want to eat them, don't they? We've got a tank at the shop, and you put pellets, and you put other baits in, they just... They react, but they don't react. You put maggots in, it is unbelievable. On. They're jumping out of the water trying to get them. You know, it's, it's <laughs> frightening. Go. Yeah. There you go. Well, my first choice of winter up weight says they're completely different. I, I would always have maggots for, for uh, a fact uh, in all my method feeder fishing and, and feeder fishing, but uh, wafters for me. Wafters are my number one winter up weight when I'm sitting waiting for a bite and I'm looking for that. And them half a dozen pulls. I don't think uh, you can go far wrong. Not with. wafters. Not wafters. Wa oh, wafters. 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 Ah. wafters that's, is, that the, is, that the, is that the Bristol way of saying it? Wafters. Wafters. <laughs> well, we're from up north and they wafters up our way. So, uh, yeah, but, you, you know, I think it's the ultimate trap for a, for a carp, Carmen. It's visual. It, it's yeah. visual yeah. Various colours. You know, a little tip I will tell you about wafters. You know, don't be drawn into the fact that, you know, 
you can only catch on a particular colour or whatever. You'll you'll find, and it's a great little tip for you. This, you know, certain colours work on certain venues, and you know, once you find out what colours work on a particular venue, and it might be reds and whites and oranges, yellows, you know, it might be orange and orange and white. And what airfield is all about oranges and whites. You know, they're the best two colours. A few fish on red, but then you go to likes of Allcroft and orange and pink for some reason. They're, they're the main colours, uh, but I know the venues, it's it's all about yellow and things like that. So find find out your local venue, you know, what particular, and you'll have a favourite, you know. If I had one particular cut, it would be orange or pink for me. I, I'm not changing the thing, but, you know, that's my first uh, choice in winter updates and calendars of maggots, but never, never, always have maggots in my, always got a few dead maggots, put them on method, just get you that fish sometimes when, where, and it's that, so. Yeah, we got. I've no more questions, Callum. I've I've literally no more questions to ask you. Uh, I've got to thank you for coming down and taking part in match chat. I know you do enjoy doing it. It'll be a lot lot better when we're on bank and t-shirts catching uh, sun. catching <laughs> uh, a load of fish. But you've told us all about your uh, your winter exploits and uh, and that and your festivals which uh, you've been in. But one thing one thing that certainly intrigued me today, um, having spoke to Callum. You know, uh, the F1 fishing is very, very technical. Listen, I'll hold my hands up. It's something I don't do. I, I don't particularly enjoy doing it. It's not really my scene, but it is very, very technical on, on certain things like that. So what I am going to say on a future episode, I'm going to bring Callum back in and uh, I'm going to get him to go into a lot more detail uh, of rigs and where you're fishing your peg. And, you know, I know they have, numerous lines throughout your peg in, in, in different depths so we've got to definitely go into that in a lot more in depth we'll uh, we'll get his thumbs screwed to the table and he can tell us some top little uh, secret tips to uh, try and put you a few more f1s on but i think that i think that will be a fantastic uh, uh, little episode just just telling us all the in-depth uh, tactics on that so uh, right i think uh, on that on that note Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having me Thanks again. Thanks very much for coming in. I hope you've enjoyed another instalment of Match Chat. Well, we, you know, we, we ain't going to get out on the bank every week. We are, because I think we're the nutters what go out there and uh, go out summer and winter. But you guys that, you know, like the fair weather and put your gear away and still want your fishing fix, we hope you've enjoyed uh, this episode. So until next time, I'm going to say tight lines. I'm going to say thank you very much to Callum Dix here, uh, one of our Maver sponsored anglers. Uh, really enjoyed it being a great chat so until next time guys if you're out tight lines if not catch us on another episode very very soon see you later guys tight lines <laughs>